Recently, I spent a week with FSRI in Northbrook, Illinois, where we burnt six electric vehicles. As an overview, FSRI is looking at the hazards around electric vehicle fires and trying to understand what's in the gas, gear contamination. There's a lot of aspects around electric vehicle fires that are just unknowns at this point. So this stage of the game, we're just gathering data. I'm a member of the technical panel, just one member, and these are my observations throughout this whole experience down in Northbrook, Illinois. The Fire Safety Research Institute, FSRI, they're part of the UL Research Institute. It's all a nonprofit, and that's where the funding, the design, the conceptualization, everything about these experiments comes from. They're dedicated to addressing the world's unresolved fire safety issues. Each day started out early at Building 11. Building 11 is where the fire lab is. And if you want to learn more about this building, check out my other video. But ultimately, this is an impressive lab. I always enjoy coming to this facility, and it seems like everybody that works here just has a great time. In order to burn all these vehicles, the testing schedule was intense. It was incredible the amount of work that went into not only getting these vehicles prepped and ready for testing, but also the turnaround time, tearing everything out after a test and resetting it for the next one. Each vehicle needed instrumentation. We had to put in thermal couples. We had to make sure everything was set up properly. A lot goes into this. Every vehicle was at 100% state of charge. Sometimes that wasn't necessarily easy. You would think you'd be able to just plug these vehicles in, they'd charge up. But at least one of these vehicles gave us a little bit of trouble and we had to consult the manual. I'm not one that just likes to sit around and watch. I like to get my hands dirty, get in there and help out. So I did get the opportunity to at least help instrument some of these vehicles, get some of those thermal couples set up where they needed to be inside the cabin of these vehicles. They are collecting a ton of data. They're looking at what's in the smoke. When they look at what's in the smoke, they have multiple pumps that are pulling air samples through specialized filters. Those filters collect what's in the gases and they can be sent off to a lab for analysis at a later date. Not only is FSRI involved, but NIOSH is also involved in this experimentation. They have large plates where they're collecting debris and contamination that settles out from the smoke onto horizontal surfaces. They have these large vacuum pumps where they're collecting a large quantity of smoke to use that smoke later on in different testing. Not only do they want to understand what happens to us if we're exposed to these toxins at a cellular level, but they want to learn the long-term effects of what happens to us if we're exposed to these types of contamination. These large black panels, those are swatches of turnout gear. They're going to test for contamination. They're going to launder them, make sure they can be decontaminated. They're looking at thermal degradation to ensure the turnout gear that we wear as firefighters to protect us actually does the job of protecting us in these types of incidents. Just like our testing in November, they lit these vehicles on fire using a burner. A large square burner that goes underneath the vehicle and it's going to heat up the bottom of the battery case. Ideally, putting that vehicle in a thermal runaway. Once the test starts, a firefighter in turnout gear, they're going to go out there, start the burner, and then the clock begins. Now, while I'm sitting here watching this vehicle burn, enjoying the views, there's a whole team gathering data, temperature data, heat release data, electrical data, all this stuff coming out of the gas in this area here. It's incredible how much work goes into each vehicle burn. Anybody can light a vehicle on fire. But to light a vehicle on fire and collect this much data, it's incredible. My personal observations as I watch these vehicles burn, it's not much different than your combustion engine vehicles. Comment below, I have an EV and a combustion engine vehicle in this video here. Right or left, can you tell which one's the EV? These vehicles, they, they've got a ton of plastic in them, just like every other vehicle on the road today. That plastic, it puts out a black, sooty smoke. It actually filled the entire inside of this building. Got us down to zero visibility. Thankfully, there are thermal imager cameras. They're able to see what's going on through the smoke as these vehicles burn. After the vehicle more or less burned itself out, a crew would go in, they'd wet down the fire, knock down the last little bit of fire, wetting down the vehicle so you could actually contaminate water. They would take those water samples and they would analyze them at a later date. At that point, it was a waiting game. You had to let the atmosphere clear out get a little bit safer so we could actually send crews in there, crews of scientists to go and start collecting their sensors, start taking the rest of their samples out to make sure they could package them up properly and get them off to the lab. Now, after my last video, there were a lot of questions on what do you do with the smoke? You just dump that smoke out into the atmosphere. And that's not the case. 
There's a large fan system built into this building, large exhaust system. It pulls all that contaminated air out. They burn it at an extremely high temperature, treating it so no particulate comes out of this smokestack. The aftermath, it looked a little bit different for each vehicle that burned. Some left a massive mess of battery cells in the pan underneath the vehicle. After the fire's out, the data has been collected, you think the day would be over. Go back to your hotel, have a meal, maybe a beverage. But no, that's not the case at all because it's time to reset for the next day. There's a lot of work going into cleaning up this lab, pulling the vehicle out, getting it to a safe location. There's a fire watch involved just in case that vehicle does reignite overnight. Once these vehicles sat overnight, a specialized company came in that's experienced with dealing with electric vehicles. They loaded up the vehicle and they took it to the recycling center. But they still have to get the next vehicle in place. They have to get all the sensors hooked up. There's a ton of work involved getting everything reset after each test. It's such a dedicated team. They put in long hours. Lots of work goes into these types of studies. And again, we're right in the middle of a three-year study. The report, all the data should be released quarter three of this year. I'm looking forward to seeing that data and seeing what the next steps are because the next step should involve burning more electric vehicles. Over the last 18 years as both a firefighter and mechanical engineer, all the things I've experienced in both careers, lots of fun, lots of neat things, lots of great opportunities. But this testing with FSRI, this has been exciting. I look forward to going back. If you want to learn more about this study, click the link in the description below or watch one of these two videos that go over the first burn we had back in November and an interview with the lead researcher Adam Barwick.